Friends, this is a very hard cataract. Nuclear sclerosis in this case is about grade 5. I have taken up this case for surgery. Let us watch the steps. The main incision has been placed and this is a side port on the left side of the main incision. And now, this is another side port on the right side of the main incision. Now, I am going to stain the capsule with tripan blue dye to get some contrast during capsular excess. The patient has coloboma iris. You can see that the pupil is picked towards 7 o'clock. There can be genular weakness and I may need a capsular tension ring in this case and I have kept that ready. So the capsule has been stained by this time. Now viscoelastic substance is injected into the anterior chamber and it is sprayed over the corneal epithelium for better visibility. Now I have taken a 26 gauge bent needle in my right hand going through the right side port. Now I am incising the capsule and raising this nice flap which is very easy to hold. Now I take a uh, utrita forceps, very thin utrita forceps and here where there is coloboma in that area I didn't go very peripherally but in other areas I have gone quite peripherally and I have made a large rexus. In hard cataracts to manage the nucleus safely we should do a large CCC about 6 millimeter or 5.75 millimeter. And now hydro dissection is done as I am doing hydro dissection on pole or on equator tends to come up but I don't want the nucleus to prolapse into the anterior chamber so I reposit the nucleus in the capsular bag and rotate it. And now viscoelastic substance is injected again. We can see that the this is a brown cataract and it is quite hard. The machine being used is Oatly Cataract 3. Fico power being used is 85 percent. Vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. I am in FECO 2 mode from the very beginning and this is what I call submarine chalk. The teeth of the FECO handpiece is buried into the substance of the nucleus just in front of the main incision. The teeth travels through the nucleus and as it crosses the center and reaches near the opposite equator, the chopper is used and it is chopped. And now I am making another chop here. Now I rotate the nucleus further along the first crack. I hold the lower heminucleus and separate it from the other heminucleus. And this is another chop on the other heminucleus. So, submarine chop is very effective in hard cataracts. We don't need to make a trench. We just have to go through the substance of the nucleus and chop it. Now I am working on each fragment with ultrasonic energy and emulsifying and removing it. Fico power being used is 85% flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury.
this is a very hard cataract and I have to spend adequate time to emulsify the nucleus. Quite far from the corneal endothelium, the tip is always at the center where the antechamber depth is maximum and uh, I am at the anterior capsular plane. This is the last portion of the nucleus. As I apply ultrasonic energy on the last portion of the nucleus, what I do is I remove the chopper and work single-handedly on the last small bead of the nucleus. That's it. The nucleus is managed. Now I inject a little bit of viscoelastic substance. You can see a very small, almost round, small bead of nucleus just in front of the main incision and that has to be taken out first. I cannot allow this to get lost underneath the iris somewhere. So that is removed first and then I remove the cortex from other areas. Here at this point at around 7 o'clock there is coloboma eyes and little bit of genular dehiscence is there but adjacent genus are quite healthy and there has been no vitreous disturbance. Now I go through the left side port and small this small portion of cortex at around 10 o'clock is removed and this is the cortex at around 8 o'clock. So cortical cleanup is done. Some cells are sticking to the posterior capsule. That will be polished out a bit later. But before that I want to inject the intraocular lens in the capsular bag. Uh, since there is a small genular dehiscence at around 7 o'clock, I have used viscoelastic substance to implant the intraocular lens. This is a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens and it is going in the capsular bag. The trailing haptic has gone into the capsular bag but the leading haptic has not yet gone into the capsular bag probably. Let us see. No, it has gone into the capsular bag. And now, what I am doing is, I am removing the viscoelastic substance from the anterior chamber, just flushing out the viscoelastic substance and then flushing the capsular bag. A lot of viscoelastic substance comes out just by flushing it out and then this is the irrigating probe of bimanual irrigation aspiration. The probe is introduced and the angle, antechamber angle is irrigated to dislodge some viscoelastic substance that was there. Now I go into the capsular bag, flush the bag again. Now I use the irrigation and aspiration together. So I have spent adequate time to remove the viscoelastic substance. Since the antechamber is very shallow, I have used this air bubble and 
to keep the antechamber formed and moxifloxacin has been injected. Now I hydrate the stab incisions stroma to make this waterproof. Now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The viscoelastic substance that sticks to the corneal endothelium comes out this time. The antechamber is formed and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in uh, developing your surgical skills. Please be a great confident surgeon.